The best Mets moment. Wait, do you mean when I was alive or? Uh, yeah, something that you've experienced. Hmm. That will probably be going to the Mets fan club for kids day. It's been a long time since we won anything, you know? And when we did win in 86, we got lucky. I don't care what anybody says, they still would have won that game anyway, even if that ball didn't roll through Buckner. I don't think Buckner was the reason that Boston lost. I think they were going to lose anyway. In 86, that was just like euphoria for anyone like in their 20s at the time. It was just incredible. I remember going to bed and just being like really, really like upset and like, you know, sitting there for five, ten minutes and just like nearly crying. And then my brother telling me like, you know, get in here, that they're actually doing, you know, they, they might come back. And then, I don't know, I just remember that, like, seeing them come back and win that game. It was just like the most unbelievable feeling in the world. You know, my mother and my father were just like, oh, why, why, are you, why are you still watching this? Why are you torturing yourself? You know, you, this is terrible, you know, and I just kept, you know, holding out, holding out. Now something, you know, something good's going to come of it. Watch, you'll see, you'll see, you know, and sure enough. I was sitting at home with my ticket to the seventh game, figuring it was all over, and that ball that Mookie hit under Buckner's legs, I started jumping up and down. I'm going to the game. I walked the whole house up. My wife came down and told me I was acting like a kid. She said I was actually jumping up and down saying, I'm going to the game, I'm going to the game. No one can understand what the city felt like when, when that ball went through Bill Buckner's legs. I mean, the city, I mean, I would live on the 15th floor of an apartment building on Roosevelt Island, and that entire city just simultaneously blew up. Ball going through Buckner's legs. I mean, how great was that, you know? If you don't get a chill or a, chill up your spine and the hair on the back of your neck standing up when um, when you hear that call. I mean, I used to have that as my uh, cell phone ring. You know, people would be looking at me like, what the? I mean, just goosebumps. Ball going through Buckner's legs. That was great. That was awesome. Okay. I remember the 1986 World Series like it was yesterday, and it was two years before I was born, but I think it just gives you the sense of what every individual moment means to a Mets fan. 86 was... I can't wait for another year like that. But see, the Mets, they always do everything the hard way. They're a far superior team than Boston was. Far superior. And they just do everything the hard way. It's just how the Mets are. You can never steamroll through anything. Do it the hard way. And I don't know why. 99 went to the NLCS. Ventura's walk-off single. That was incredible. 2000, Benny Agbayani against the Giants. Game three of the... 2000 NLDS when Benny Agbayani hit a walk-off homer in the 13th inning. I was at both games and that was the loudest I've ever heard in the stadium. The feeling at Shea was euphoric. It was like a World Series atmosphere even though it was just playoffs. I was there. I was all by myself. I walked through the rain and I was just, I just looked up to the sky and I just was like in another world. It's like another a world where other people, other fans don't usually enter. In 1984, the Mets surprised everybody. They came out of the gates fast and hard. They were winning baseball games. Um, you know, after a terrible year where they won something like 70 games the year before. And, you know, everybody's into it. Fans are going nuts. It's the last out before the All-Star game. Nobody leaves the stadium. Everybody just stands up and starts giving the Mets a standing ovation because they gave the fans something that they never expected. We're in first place. Here we are at the All-Star break. Who expected this? And everybody on the team came out of the dugout, waved to the fans, and threw their hats into the, into the stadium, and, uh, into, the, into the fans. And I thought that was just one of the, I mean, that was fans and Mets. That was just a pure love affair, and it was just, it was just one of the great moments that I, I can remember. I guess probably the 69 World Series is probably the best moment because it was the first one. And it came from nowhere to win that championship. And, and you know, just watching Cleon as a uh, geez, 15 or 16 year old high school kid now and running home to see game five when the World Series was in the afternoon, when, which it should be now again, but it'll never be. But and just watching Cleon catch that ball from Davy Johnson go down to one knee, that's to me, you know, 86 was great too. But that, maybe more so because it was, you know, it, it was the first one. And they had been so bad for all the years prior to that. When the Mets won their first World Series in 69, it was the greatest thing. I was a 13-year-old teenager and the only girl on the block 
that was like nuts about baseball, and I used to bring my portable little radio to, to school. They were, you know, a new franchise that really accomplished something. They were a miracle. And I believe in black cats bringing luck since then. You know, they just lose all the time, and you know, a big thrill is, you know, coming from behind and losing five to four. And then 69, like everything that went wrong for those previous seven years, which is basically my whole life, went, uh, went positive. And I'm screaming and yelling. My mother's telling me, what's going on? What's going on? What's wrong with you? I go, don't you know the Mets have just won the World Series? It's a miracle. She goes, oh, come on. You, come on. You, you're crazy. You're crazy. I go, no, it's a miracle. A team that was like mediocre comes out of nowhere and beats the great Baltimore team that was heavily, heavily favored to win the World Series. That was the one. 1966, when Commissioner Eckerd put all the names in a hat and he pulled out the name of the Mets and they drafted Tom Seaver. That has changed the whole franchise. That is the most defining and greatest moment in the history of the Mets. Uh, you could say World Series games, the game six of the World Series. You could say winning the World Series in 1969. But the day that Commissioner Eckert put his hand in the, in, the, in the hat and pulled out the Mets and they got Tom Seaver, that has changed everything for this franchise. The day they retired Tom Seaver's number and uh, they had the ceremony at Chase Stadium and Tom Seaver uh, was gracious and he, and, he, and, he, and he spoke on the microphone on the, on, the, on the field and then for a moment he was in a suit and I remember this like it was yesterday. He was in a suit and he said, I need to do this. Essentially, what he did was he turned around, he walked away from the microphone, and ran in his suit to the mound at Chase Stadium, got on the mound, and bowed to three separate sections of the stadium. And to me, that was my most intense Met highlight. It was an emotional, moving experience I'll never forget. My favorite moment, or my best moment, is Mike Piazza's home run after the September 11th. The whole train ride over there, we took the 7 train out and um, it was absolutely, you know, electric. New York City had just been through, you know, the most incredible trauma and people were really excited to be out at a ball game and um, the place was just, it was like um, the best rock concert you could ever imagine. You had a feeling that something special was going to happen. Um, and, you know, I mean, the fact that, it, you know, the Mets had picked up, I think they were at one point in August 10 games out and they had by that game, I think they got into within four and a half of the Braves, and it was an important game. You know, I don't remember much of the game uh, itself. Uh, I just remember the Mets were, uh, you know, the Mets were losing, and it was the bottom of the eighth, and Piazza came up, and I mean, there was a tremendous amount of excitement in the air. I mean, there was. Uh, just always something when, when Piazza came up in important situations, he hit so many important home runs over the course of his career for the Mets that there was just a buzz. And uh, I'm pretty sure everyone stood up. And you know, someone who keeps score, that's, that's not an easy thing to do because you've got your scorecard and it's, it's always like, where am I my scorecard? It might fall on the ground and there's all kinds of beer and peanuts and junk on the, on the, uh, on the, on the ground. So uh, we're standing up and I just, it was, I mean, the home run itself just took your breath away. I mean, it was one of the most gorgeous, majestic home runs I've ever seen. It was just so high and hit to dead center. I was sitting in my buddy's living room and I was just sitting there drinking a couple beers and you just knew it. Like Piazza is just clutch and he hit that home run, I goosebumps, everything, tears in my eyes. I was. That, that was by far the best Mets moment I ever saw. All the emotion of that day just came, you know, flooding out of everybody. And I've, I don't think there's been that long of an ovation, um, uh, you know, for, you know, in the middle of a game for a hit, for any kind of a, a, a play that, that, I, that I can remember. People just kept screaming and waving, you know, waving American flags. And there was just something about it that was just unbelievable. And uh, uh, you know, there had been so much emotion leading up to it, and you know, the national anthem, and Diana Ross singing "God Bless America," and Liza Vanilli singing "New York, New York." That uh, it was just really the perfect, uh, the perfect ending to uh, a, gr a great way to get back into you know, the national pastime and kind of 
begin that healing process that was, you know, very difficult for New Yorkers coming out of September 11th. 